Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now, we've titled today's program, You Are What You Eat, because we're going to be speaking all about health and nutrition. I have some great guests joining me tonight. We have chef and nutritionist, Del Pinnock, who's going to be telling us some healthy alternatives, some popular meals that maybe you think cannot be healthy. And also, we're going to be joined by the lovely Jane Rafter, who's our resident fitness expert, and she'll also be talking to us about exercise, metabolism, and everything you need to know about losing weight or putting on weight, if that's your case, whatever it is, they'll be answering all your questions. So this is a live show so you can call as well if you have any questions to ask our experts you can call on 020 7686 6300 and you can also email chris at chrissybshow.tv i already have some emails here ready to ask our guests so if you want to get yours in as well do contact us but i'm not going to waste any time because i really want to get into this topic straight away because i'm very excited about it so let's introduce our first guest which is dale hi, hi dale how you doing? i'm very well how are you i'm good i'm good glad to be here i'm very glad you're here because I mean, you, you are on TV quite a lot and, you know, you, you do some fantastic cooking. I've seen some of the, the things that you've done as well. Excellent, it you. looks very thank nice. You. So because a lot of people do think that they can't eat lovely food and it, to, for it to taste good. Like they think that they can't do that. They think junk tastes brilliant. Yep. And they can't have, they can't replicate that in a healthy way. Everyone just thinks that health food is like, you know, beards and sandals and knitted shirts and rabbit food. <laughs> You know, what I like to show people is that it can be indulgent. It can mm -hmm. be really decadent. You can recreate all of your favourites. Yeah. You can really, you have to really enjoy your food. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, feel, if you feel deprived, if you feel your food's boring, then you're never going to stick to a healthy lifestyle. So. How did you get into all this nutrition stuff? Oh, God. I mean, I've been into it for years. I got into yeah. it because um, from about 10 or 11 years old, I started getting really bad acne. Okay. Um, Went to so many different specialists, um, doctors, dermatologists, all sorts. Mm. Nothing made any difference. Really? really, I was given all sorts of topical lotions and potions, different bits and bobs. Slight changes here and there, but nothing Does that drastic. affect your confidence a lot? Oh, massively. Sorry to get off the subject, massively. but you know I like to yeah. know the story would, behind the person. I would never sit under lighting like this. You know, really? I'd be kind of cowering behind the sofa or oh. sitting here with a scarf over my face because yeah. I was that conscious of it. Um, but when I was, um, I was 15, I remember it really well. I was 15, I was sitting around at my friend's house one evening, moping. Uh -huh. And uh, his mum lent me a book. She gave me this book on nutrition. She said, look, unless you sort out what's going on on the inside, nothing's going to change on the outside. Wow. So obviously as a 15-year-old boy, I was like, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> Took this thing and read it, cover to cover at a weekend, just changed my diet drastically there and then. And, you know, experienced massive changes. Mm -hmm. But then I started reading more and more and more on the subject and became more and more fascinated with it. And that's it. I was hooked. Okay. And here I am so today. So now you're doing yeah, it like yeah, full time. Yeah. It's your it's yes. your passion as well. I yeah. can see that because you love speaking about it. <laughs> exactly. So to tell us some of the things like the common maybe misconceptions that people have about eating eating healthily. Well, I think uh, the first one that we touched on is that it's going to be dull and boring. It doesn't mm. have to be. Um, but you know, we'll definitely touch on that a little later yeah. with some of the examples we've got. A big one is that it's expensive. And that is, you know, that's complete nonsense. I've proved it time and time again. Mm -hmm. If you shop locally, I mean, like for example, in London virtually on every single corner you've got people little market stalls people selling fresh produce for mm -hmm. next to nothing you can get bags and bags and bags full of fresh produce for yeah. very very little yeah. um, people often think that it would be time consuming there's always ways around that you can batch that's cook the things. thing that's the common thing because i'm a very busy person but i do like mm. to, i do it pretty healthily apart from the chocolates yeah i mean if, if you've got an hour or so to cook something yeah then cook three four five times more than you normally mm. would freeze small portions of yeah. it so that you actually start to stock up your freezer with healthy meals then like take one out in the morning when you get home from work there's one defrosted mm -hmm. there warm it through bam bam easily okay now you've Easy. released your book you said three three mm -hmm. weeks ago right the mm -hmm. medicinal chef so this is great for people that just want to great meals but very very healthy right so we've yeah. got some oh, there's so many lovely recipes and Oh, look, look, I've, I've landed on the Greek page. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a coincidence. Greek pizza pizza. Absolutely. So a, a lot of people think I cannot eat pizza, yeah. for example, I'm trying to lose weight. I love pizza. It's, it's yeah. great. I like proper pizza. But the thing is, with this, it's not like eight inch thick, white ble bleached flour, <laughs> high GI. So what's the base on, on this? It's a pizza bread. It's, it's just a, a whole wheat pizza bread. Yeah? Pizza bread. So that's, whole that's a very slow release carbohydrate, right. will keep you full, very, very low GI. It's not mm. smothered in cheese, there's a little yeah. bit of feta on there. A little bit of mint. Am I allowed to show some, the picture? I want to show the black picture. Olives. Can I quickly flip? Can I? Okay, we'll just quickly flash the picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the black olives on there, tomatoes, that looks lovely. Kind of okay. So you've still go. got the same flavour experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you've still got that culinary experience that going on. But it's so much better yeah. for you because it's a better choice of actual core ingredients. Okay. And then you've got like 
desserts and things. Yeah, you can have desserts, oh. you can have chocolate <gasps> desserts. I often make a chocolate mousse, for example, using mm -hmm. avocados. That Literally pureeing up avocado, you add uh, cocoa powder. I really to want it. to taste that one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring that one. Sorry. Next time. Okay. Next That's time. Right. I've got a few questions here because mm -hmm. um, obviously this is something that does affect well everyone because mm -hmm. as we, as the title says, we are what we eat because yep. it can affect our mood, the way we look. Like you said, with the being, On every having acne. Every conceivable level. So, absolutely. what are some of the maybe the common mistakes that? people make maybe when they think they're trying to be healthy but in reality they're not because right. some people go oh. for a study and it's like yeah. I'm going to have this health bar because I think it's a health bar and it's mm -hmm. from a health shop so it must be good for me and it must yeah. you know affect me quite in a nice good in a nice way it's one of my real bugbears I mean yeah. the worst worst offenders I think are the low fat diet things okay so let's say like a low fat yogurt sounds yeah. great sounds really really virtuous like you're doing yourself a favor then you pick it up and read the ingredients it's pure sugar it's rubbish, sugar coloring stabilizers yeah. everything in there other than food mm -hmm. okay um i would say it's always natural yogurt okay because sometimes fantastic. i just buy natural green it's yogurt wonderful. and i mix it with honey and i put perfect. some nuts and things perfect absolutely okay. because it's real food your body knows what to do with it you right. know when you start to take in this really weird cocktail of man-made junk you know that's yeah. going to affect your health on a lot of levels okay what other maybe mistakes do people make, do you think? Other mistakes. I think maybe putting too much pressure on themselves as well. I mean, you have to be realistic when you're changing mm. your diet because, you know, it can be a really massive lifestyle shift for a lot of people. Yeah. So start small. So rather oh. than try and just go from eating takeaway every night and junk food to being, like, virtuous, yeah. small steps. So if you say, okay, I'm going to start having a, a, a good side salad with everything that I eat or mm -hmm. I'm going to snack on fruit between meals, set yourself one goal. Yeah. Yeah. Once that becomes like a normal habit, then mm -hmm. you know, move the goalposts a little bit, try something else. Okay. So I think I think that's a big mistake that people make is they try and do everything all at once. Mm -hmm. What about things like smoothies? Are they pretty good for people? Depends on the game. Depends. If you yeah. make them yourself, yeah. I would say if you do make smoothies at home, try and get yourself like a, a protein powder or use peanut butter or something in there as well as just the fruit. Because right. if you're using just the fruit, it can be very, very sugary. The natural sugars in the fruit can actually affect your energy levels, um, can make blood sugar go up and down all over the really? place. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh my because gosh, they're a very, very fast release sugar. Yeah. But you put a bit of protein in there with it, say peanut butter or a protein powder or something, uh -huh. that slows down the release of that sugar. So that will give you a nice sustained oh. energy level throughout the day. But if it's just smushed up fruit, that can See, actually... See, people think that that's something can, really good. It can be good, but a lot but. of people are quite sensitive. If I have just a fruit smoothie, then yeah. I'll find that like um, my head goes a little bit cloudy. Oh. I can sometimes feel a little bit bloaty as well mm -hmm. because the fast release sugars. Okay. But have a bit of protein with it, or even water it down. Or if if you can't do that, and you get the smoothie, make sure you hold it in your mouth for a little bit longer. Here's a little tip. Okay. Get the smoothie, hold it in your mouth for mm -hmm. a little before you swallow it. You'll notice the ch the taste change slightly as the enzymes in your saliva start to break it down. Then yeah. you swallow it, and the actual sugars will be. Partially broken oh, that's down. a good trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just take a caller quickly, Dale. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chrissy. You're right. Hello. I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. What's How your name? <laughs> my name's uh, my name's Lewis. Hi, Lewis. Did you have a question for us? Um, or for yeah. Expert, well, I, so, I I agree with um, sort of you out what you eat. Uh, I work in sport, um, and at the moment I'm I'm a bit uh, on a bit of a diet myself, like working with water and green tea and having natural. Um, natural food sources and cooking mm. and grilling my chicken. The question I sort of have for Dale, because I feel a million times better for it, mm -hmm. the question I have is sometimes it gets a bit bland. So sauces, like I like Nando sauces and salads, like salad mm -hmm. dressing, but a lot of them have a lot of added sugar in and they're quite fatty. Is there anything what you recommend Dale to use instead? Um, well, for chicken, it's a, an amazing one. Really, really simple. A little bit of sea salt, a little bit of cracked black pepper, and then a sprinkling of Chinese five spice. And then okay. just griddle it both sides. Sounds really, really simple, but you get an amazing, amazing flavour. Yeah. You can even mix those with a tiny little bit of honey. Obviously, don't go mad with it because there is quite a lot of sugar in honey. Um, but it's good but for your honey, isn't it? Like very good for you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's better than just like a, a sort of white granulated sugar. Yeah. But that will caramelise slightly as you start to grill it, and that will create an amazing flavour. Really, mm. really amazing flavour. So, yeah, something as simple as that. Okay, thanks, sir. Because uh, I've had chicken the last few nights, and I'm enjoying it, and I feel so much more alert and healthy and athletic. But sometimes it just feels a bit dry, and I'm just getting a little yeah. bit bored of it. So. it. It can it can get a little bit a little bit dull sometimes. But just you know, just experiment with different herbs and spices and seasons yeah. and things, and. Good idea. Um, 
I think the seasoning is a real, real key point. Like mm. just a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of pepper can really just bring things to life. Can mm, make I'm a massive try that, difference. I think. All right, thanks um, very much for your call. Oh, did you have something else? Sorry. Yeah, no, I just wanted to ask, as in first first thing in the morning as well, because like I said, I'm on green tea and water, and just like an energizer. Sometimes I have fruit, but sometimes I feel like that leaves me a little more full than energizer. If that makes sense. That's what I was talking about with the smoothies before. Yeah. It can actually sometimes send your blood sugar up so fast that you know you get a crash afterwards. So you feel mm. great for a couple of minutes, but then boom, you start to yeah. your energy levels start to go. Have the yeah. fruit, then have a handful of nuts with it. Something like Brazil nuts, almonds, um, even pumpkin seeds, something like that. And that protein, that extra protein with the sugar. Mm -hmm. will slow down what, the release what, of the What if you're allergic to nuts, mate? <laughs> ah, <laughs> then, in that case, <laughs> then you probably want to try something else. I would have thought, um, a good protein-based breakfast then. Maybe something like, um, you're all right with eggs? Yeah, no, I'm good with eggs. I'm good with eggs. Um, good with eggs. Yeah, a, a boiled egg or yeah, uh, some scrambled egg. Me. One of my favourites, if I'm really, really ravenous, is like um, uh, spinach and feta scramble. Mm. So a little bit of feta crumbled in there. Ooh, some, hungry. Some, that sounds, nice. that sounds really good. I'm going to try that. Some spinach in there, some cracked black pepper. Oh, that amazing. That sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're All going right. to leave you with that then because we're going to need to go to a All quick break. Right. Well, thanks for your call. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, right. thank you. Thanks. And so after the break, you're going to be showing us a couple of things that I you've am. prepared. Yes. Healthy stuff. Yes. And very, very nutritional. So join us after this. And if you do have a question, do give us a call as well. 020 7686 6300. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back, and I'm still he here with the lovely Dale, and he's gonna be showing us a wonderful soup that you're food yeah, fighting. Yeah, I've got a couple soup. of dishes. Yeah. One of my real areas of interest is how food can be used as a therapeutic tool, mm -hmm. okay? And this is a prime example. It's, it, it's kind of become my signature dish, really. Yeah. This is my Smells really nice, by the way. fighting soup. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just talk you through some of the ingredients and some of the amazing properties that they have. Mm -hmm. So probably one of the first things that you can smell in there, loads and loads of garlic. Yeah. Okay, there's four cloves of garlic in there, so you're not going out anywhere later, right? No, but no? Okay. hopefully okay. we'll Good. Say hello to my husband. <laughs> he might okay. not come near me. <laughs> Garlic is quite a potent antiviral. Yeah. Those oils in there, the thing that give it the really, really strong smell, mm -hmm. they can only be removed from our body once we consume them via one root and one root alone, and that is to actually breathe them out. Okay. As we breathe them out and they move through the respiratory tract, they can actually kill bugs and viruses that are kind of sitting on the oh, mucous membranes. Okay. So some of the things that are actually causing some of these infections mm -hmm. in the first place. Really cool ingredient. <clears throat> Next thing to go in there is red onion. Mm -hmm. Okay, now all of the allium family, so onions, garlic, leeks, chives, all of those kind of things have that antiviral activity. Mm -hmm. But onions have another little secret going on. They're anti-inflammatory. Right. And that anti-inflammatory activity comes from the chemicals that give them that lovely purple colour. So it has. what about the, the normal white onions? Are they as good? They or do like have that activity, but, but to a much lesser extent. The okay. real key is in that purple colour pigment. Mm -hmm. It's a group of compounds called flavonoids, yeah. and they actually deliver this anti-inflammatory activity. Mm -hmm. So we've got one red onion in there, there's four cloves of garlic in there, chilli. Chilli, yep. Chilli, like these chili. little bad boys. Right, yeah. have you ever had that experience where you eat something really hot and your nose starts to Yes, run? I have. It's decongestant. So if you've got a cold, mm. it's going to help to sh mm -hmm. shift things, basically. Some ginger going in there. Yeah. Okay, we've got a really good lump of ginger, probably about, about an inch size piece. Okay. Ginger is a really, really powerful anti-inflammatory. You think about it, when you've got a cold, and you're really, really bunged up, most of the time it's not that you're actually full of gunk and goo, mm -hmm. it's that the mucous membranes are actually inflamed whilst your immune system is attacking the virus that's there. Mm -hmm. The compounds in ginger that give it the spicy sort of flavour actually block the production of things that switch on inflammation in the first place. Right. Okay, so it's reducing that inflammation. So yeah. already you're kind of tackling the virus, you're reducing inflammation, mm -hmm. you're helping to clear the airways just with the first few ingredients. These are some of my favourites. I love favorites. those. Shiitake I love mushrooms. These. Oh, these, gosh. Yeah, these are Are they amazing. just as effective if they're dried? The, uh, the fresher better the better. The, the mm. fresher the better, really. Um, over 40 years, 40 years of clinical research has been conducted on these. Okay? There's a special type of sugar in there called a polysaccharide. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it actually elevates white blood cell count. It kind of fools our immune system into thinking that we're like, under a major attack and our uh -huh. production of white blood cells oh. goes up. 
you know, that's the army of the immune system. Yeah. The more of those you've got in circulation, the better position you are to actually deal with infection. Mm -hmm. Okay. What makes them better than the other normal mushrooms? It's, it's like that polysaccharide. The, it's that, that sugar. Yeah. That that's found in all mushrooms, <coughs> but the ones in shiitake are like it's extra powerful. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're pretty potent. And sweet potato mm. in there. So sweet potato, dual role, really. Firstly, it makes the whole soup lovely and creamy when you go to blend it up. Yeah. But also, that orange flesh in there, something called beta-carotene, that's anti-inflammatory as well. Mm -hmm. So you know what these wonderful things do? Would you like to taste uh, it? I, I would, on, and I'm roll. just saying that I'm very messy. I'm a bit of a messy eater. Don't watch me. Okay, let me just take a tea with you. <laughs> just a little bit. Do it it's too got a, much. Yeah, it's got a bit of a kick to it as well. Mmm. So. That, oh, that's lovely. That's awesome, isn't it? That is delicious. <laughs> so even if you're not ill, that's going to be a really, really mm. nice thing. But a cup of this every every like one or two hours, just a small bit, mm. first signs of a cold, and that will just blow it out of your body. That is delicious. Gone. And then what I, I often, I'm when, I, when, I, when I make a batch, I, I tend to make a little bit too much of it. from, from that. I, no, you're literally starting off with the, um, with the onion, the garlic. Oh, there are a few goji berries in there as well, okay. just to give it some sweetness. Um, onion and garlic, mm. cook those down with the chilli and the ginger till the onion's nice and home. soft. Yeah, go for it, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Um, mm. Then add the, the mushrooms and the sweet potato, cover it with vegetable stock and simmer mm. it until the sweet potato softens, then blitz it, that's it. Nice Is that in easy. your cookery book? It's in there, absolutely. It's the famous flu fighter. <laughs> and then, you know, we've got a little sweet treat for you as well because, you know, it's right, not all on, about I do have a, let, me, let me confess to the viewers, I did actually start on these in the green room because they're really, really yummy, but they'll tell us all about them. Well, good, they've I got a nice... Help it, could we? You know, you can have the sweet stuff as well. You know, yeah. you, can have, you can have these kind of treats. This is something that I created just to help you drop off to sleep. Actually, mm. yeah, because one of the key ingredients. I do like to have here, something a bit like cake. This is perfect. Jane's over there. She's listening to me. I like, do like to have something cakey with my something tea before cakey. I go to bed. Yeah, well, this yeah. is perfect. This is yeah. perfect because it's a more virtuous version. Bananas are very, very rich in something called tryptophan, which mm. is an amino acid. Tryptophan actually gets into the brain and the nervous system and gets converted into something called serotonin, mm -hmm. which, amongst other things, regulates the body clock. Actually, helps you to drop off to sleep. But when you consume a tryptophan-rich food, you need to have a complex carbohydrate with it, mm -hmm. such as the oats that are oats. used in here. So you've got two functional ingredients there, but then it's got to taste good as well. So we've got the mashed banana, we've got peanut butter in there. So how, how, can you talk us through how to, how to yeah, make it? Yeah, you need to use very, very ripe bananas. Right. You know, so ones that are starting to get black spots on the skin. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really quite sort of squidgy and gooey. Mash those down. Yeah. Put them into a pan with a little bit of coconut oil, mm -hmm. a couple of tablespoons of peanut butter, and some honey or agave or something like that, like yeah. a nice natural sweetener. Start to melt that down until uh -huh. you know you're getting hungry. Then, aren't you? <laughs> then so add uh, hungry. add the Can oats. Can you tell you my face? I'm like, huh. Oats. There's some goji <laughs> berries and um, there's pumpkin seeds in there. Yeah. Just I'm I'm really bad for actually weighing things out. I just say, keep adding it until you get like a nice sort of sticky mix. Don't mm -hmm. let it get too dry, and then bake it at about 180 degrees for 20 minutes. If that, mm -hmm. if it goes golden, and then you're left with this. Well, I'm going to pretend to try it again. Let's just pretend I haven't already had some in the grill because I'm going to have a little bit more because it is so yummy. But it's got a nice cakey sort of texture. It has, it's not yeah. Like, you know, it's not because like sometimes flap flap actually buy in the shop, for example, they're quite sort of hard. Like sometimes. sawdust, like the bottom of a hamster cage. Yeah, really. it's, it's been compressed <laughs> yeah. into a block. Yeah, yeah. And this it is nothing taste. like that. This has got the whole, the whole kind of cakey thing going on. It's lovely. It's, How good is I that? I can't explain it. You have to try it. It's <laughs> nice and light, but the, the bananas give it that texture. Mm. They make you know, it's like you know, like a nice banana cake. Yeah. Strangely enough, mm -hmm. you know, like a nice banana cake, it's got that sort of texture. It's so really that, nice. a cup of green tea, happy days. That could have been good for breakfast, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I often do, or like um, something like that straight after a workout can be quite mm -hmm. good. You know, it's the perfect kind of thing. It's portable. Yeah. All right, let me just, okay, I'm still chewing, but let me, yeah. I've got a couple of questions from our viewers, no though, if we can ask you as well. Let me find them here. Right. This one's asking, I'll leave a couple for Jane as well, because some of them are just through metabolism. Um, this one's asking, is all fish good for you? Most of it, yeah. Most of it. Mm -hmm. I would say go towards the oily fish, really, because yeah. there's um, very, very high levels of the omega-3 fatty acids in there. Mm -hmm. These things that we're hearing so much about, I mean, they're, they're anti-inflammatory, they're good for the brain and the nervous system, for eyesight, for immunity, fantastic for cardiovascular health. So salmon, mackerel, herrings, those yeah. kind of things. All fish are going to be a very, very good source of protein, a very, very easily digestible protein. Because I, I was reading somewhere that, um, I think it was in a running magazine, that maybe we shouldn't have more than sort of three portions a week because of the pollution in the sea. But I don't know. Like, well, it's, you know, it's a bit... 
It's interesting. I mean, um, a colleague of mine that, um, that leads a lot of research at Oxford University, and they've done a lot of the work with kind of omega-3 fatty mm. acids and fish intake, they always say the implications of not consuming enough far outweigh okay. any potential yeah. risks of so um, toxicity. Yeah. You can say that about anything. I mean, yeah. unless you kind of like sleeping in Tupperware every night, you're going to be exposed <laughs> to all these weird and wonderful toxins. Yeah. It's part of modern life, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. But it's better just to kind of have good food consistently mm. rather than worry about the you know little intricacies of what may or may not be in there okay and we had another question as well what's the best time to actually stop eating in the evening that really depends there's you know there's not like a i mean we were having this conversation earlier there's not really a hard and fast answer obviously going to bed on a massive you know on a massive meal is not a good idea for lots of reasons yeah. obviously you you know you're not going to be able to utilize a lot of that energy whilst you're asleep mm -hmm. that much food in your digestive system is going to affect your sleep you know, it's going to make you restless. Um, but, you know, if you if you work late, if you've got very strange patterns, then, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing to eat mm -hmm. late at night. Just don't eat something really, really heavy. I would say a lean protein and, um, you know, sort of green vegetables or salad or something like yeah. that that's not too energy dense, but is going to actually physically make you feel quite full. Protein mm -hmm. fills you up. So, that you, you know, you're not kind of going to bed with a, a gurgling stomach, but at the same yeah. time, you're not going to be taking in... Too much. Too so much, there's, yeah. you know, the the long, the long and short of it is there isn't like a, a simple yeah, answer. So it depends okay. on so many things, but just nothing huge. All right, that soup would be lovely Perfect. for the evening, wouldn't it? Perfect. Yeah, even even. I'd have that for breakfast, to be honest. <laughs> I would. It's a good base for a curry. Yeah. Mm, oh gosh, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. One more. Do I have time for one more question? Let me see. Yeah. Okay. She's telling me yes. Uh, this one's asking about vitamins. What are the best vitamins to take? I mean, I, I don't really take vitamins because I'm really bad at remembering to take things. I normally really try to yeah, eat yeah. a lot of fruit and nuts and things like that. But do people really need to take vitamins? I would say to people, food first. Yeah. You know, always, always food first. If you think that vitamins are going to replace good eating habits, then that's absolutely the wrong no, thing to no. do. I take supplements every day. Right? Mm -hmm. I just take a multi, I take omega-3, and I take some B vitamins. Mm -hmm. But I always do it in, you know against the backbone of a very, very good diet. Right, so okay. food first. I would just say just a good quality multivit or, or whatever. But again, with supplementation, that really does need to be done under guidance. Mm -hmm. So obviously seeing a, a, a nutritional practitioner yeah. to actually devise a program that's tailored to your particular needs. Okay. And I need to start taking my vitamins again. Yeah, because if good, you do, I mean, I, I definitely good multi, have to. Absolutely. Yeah, okay, absolutely. I'll start doing that again. All right, we're going to go to a quick break. Though you're going to stay with us throughout I'm the indeed. show today yep. to answer yep. questions no and give more advice. Because afterwards, also, we have Jane Rafter coming up, who's our resident fitness expert. As you know, she's not in her fitness gear today, but she's going to be talking about fitness. So join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back and before we go over to Jane and Dale, let's take a look at what people on the streets of London had to say about their eating habits. We often don't think about the food that we put into our bodies and our diets, whether we have too much junk food or whether we have food with too much sugar in it, or maybe it's the quantity of food, but we don't often analyse what we're actually putting into our bodies. So I'm going to go and talk to people and ask them what they eat and why. What's your favourite food that you like to eat? Um, it's Asian food. Okay, is there a particular dish? Thai cuisine, like the curries, the green curries I like most. Rice and chicken. Um, I'll do Nando's. Nando's, okay, and you? Uh, I like Indian food. Okay, so what's your favourite dish? Spaghetti, I love my mum's spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, definitely, spaghetti as well. And what sauce would it be? A spicy one. Um, fairly plain English food. Like what, can you pick a dish? I like sausage and mash. <laughs> Pizza's good. This is gonna sound really disgusting, it's tuna fish casserole. My, my mum makes it, I have no idea if it actually exists. Anything spicy, Thai, Malaysian, uh, Indian, um, Vietnamese. Totally no Indian. Oh, barbecue, I think. And is that your favourite because um, of the taste, or do you think about health, um, healthy food? I don't think about health, I just think about the taste. No horse meat. <laughs> yeah. If you really stop to think about it, you know, it's not good to kill animals to eat. What do you think you eat the most of, like? Cheese and bacon and spicy sausage. Um, anything unhealthy, really. I do. I put salad with like nearly everything. 
So compromise. Make sure it's a balanced diet. Do you think about healthy food at all, or is that not something that's so important to you? That's um, that's our unhealthy treat. But most of the time, we eat meat and veg and salads and so on and so forth. Not much potatoes, not much bread and stuff like that. As long as it's vegetarian, so I'm fine. If vegetarian, it's health is it's, it's a secondary con, uh, consideration, really. Do you like to pick something you like over whether it's healthy or not? No, consider both. But whether I like it is more important to me. I don't add salt to anything that I cook or eat. What about sweet tooth? Have you got a sweet tooth? Not at all. Give me a packet of cheese and onion crisps any day. I eat chocolate occasionally, but other than that, I, I, I would rather have cheese and biscuits than a, than a sweet after a meal. Um, Cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake. <laughs> cheesecake, we love cheesecake. Okay. Favourite dessert would just have to be a cheesecake. I just love cheesecake, yeah. Probably some, some form of ice cream. Yes, I have this problem. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a kind of sweet person, you know. What's your favourite dessert? Oh, dessert, I don't know. Maybe a brownie, a strudel, apple pie. You know, in Poland, they have really wonderful apple pies as well. <laughs> Why on earth did they put the idea of a cheesecake in my mind now? Because that's what I'm going to be thinking about. <laughs> Jane, you like cheesecake, don't you? I do like cheesecake. I just said that, didn't I? I do like a bit of cheesecake. Yeah. Do you, you don't eat it often, do you? You're quite, you're quite no, disciplined, I, I, aren't you? No, Literally. I think it is all about balance, isn't it? You yeah. see? So I definitely like to have the odd treat, and I do like cheesecake, you mm. know, high days and holidays. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us about, you know, if people are wanting to lose a bit of weight and get healthy, how yes. can the food affect their exercise regime? I think um, it's important to get the right kind of food that's going to give you the energy to do the exercise mm -hmm. and keep you full and keep your blood sugars level um, without overeating. A, lot. a big mistake that a lot of people do make actually is that they overcompensate. So they'll go and do a class and they'll think, right, I can eat whatever I want because I've done a bit of aerobics, and that's a fatal error to make um, because you're just how, how undermining. Much, how, how many hours of aerobics do you have to do to burn off like one muffin, for example? Well, I mean, in terms of calories, if you were to do a really hard, say a Zumba class, mm -hmm. 400 calories, maybe, maybe 500, depends how hard you work. You know, if you do it low impact, it's 300. But, you know, a muffin is, is probably about 300 and odd calories. Yeah. So... If you eat that and a big dinner, you've, you've kind of erased, you've not erased the fitness and health benefits of doing the exercise, mm. but in terms of weight loss, you've, you've undermined what you've achieved. Mm -hmm. So you do need to bear that in mind, that you can't then go and eat whatever you want. But having <laughs> said that, you can eat a little bit more of the right type of food yeah. if you're working out. You do need a bit more set of the right kind of carbohydrates, usually, is the, is the type of thing that you want. So... There's a big thing about carbohydrates, isn't there? There's a big fashion. Everyone's heard of the Atkins diet, oh, um, God, which yeah. was I never zero ever carbs. tried that one. I never did because no. it just sounds blah. No, and I mean a lot of people did it, and by carbs. And they lost weight fast, but they also they put did. the weight on fast, didn't they? Yeah, and actually the man Atkins died of, of a heart problem young. <laughs> did he? I didn't yeah, know that. So he was not a great advocate of oh his own gosh. diet. Um, it's not a healthy diet. I mean, no. carbohydrates should form roughly a third of your total mm -hmm. intake every single day. And it's the type of food that gives you long lasting energy. But I think the, what people should know is that they need to eat the right kind of carbohydrates right, at the yeah. right time. So mm. carbohydrates are um, complicated to understand, and I'll try and explain it in a simple form. Okay. There are good carbs and, and bad carbs, if you like. So the good type of carbohydrates are the ones that are unrefined. They're more pure and they're more mm. natural. So that would be you know, a granary loaf of bread or oats. Which um, you pushed me to do, which I is bless her, because I was eating a lot of um, white bread. I, I did. I do love my white and toast, I had but to, I've been so good. I've been I had to thank you quite a few times about yeah. that, didn't I? Because <laughs> I've been sending Jane a food diary every day except yesterday, because I was really naughty yesterday. <laughs> I wondered where yesterday's was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm still yeah, waiting it wasn't, it wasn't for great. I will send it to you. It wasn't too bad, but I did yeah. have to go and see. So the, yeah. the right kind of carbohydrates and things like trying to switch to brown rice and brown pasta mm. instead of, of white, you know, white bread, white pasta is more refined. And things like biscuits and cakes and, and that kind of thing yeah. will give you the quick energy rush that you might be craving. If you get really hungry and you eat something like that, you feel great for a short time, but yeah. actually that energy is not long lasting. So a couple mm. of hours later, you're feeling tired and you're feeling hungry again. So if you have the right kind of food, 
that will see you through a mm -hmm. few hours so that you can go and do your workout, um, not even think about food. You won't feel hungry, you won't feel tired, your blood sugars won't drop. So right. a nice combination of nice lean protein, which is fish, chicken, that mm -hmm. type of thing, um, cheese, nuts, um, and some good um, natural carbohydrates are crucial. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. Now, now cheese, let's go over to Dale. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> what cheese. do you think about cheese? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I like. Uh, I like. Is a there nice a bad bit. type of cheese? The cheese that's finished. Yeah, that's the worst type. When you look at it, the packet's empty. Yeah. You know what? It's all about the amount that you eat. If you yes. eat too much of it, it's going to make you feel awful. You know. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, I don't get that fixated on the whole fat thing because fat is such a, a vital nutrient to our body, and it's really not the villain that everyone's made it out to be. Right. And the amount of evidence that actually... It's so good to hear that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because the thing is, the whole evidence base for the, this big public health message that was put out there, that fat is the villain, was literally like wafer thin. It was based on some very, very bad science mm. um, in, in the late 40s and then some more in the mid 50s. And these two bits of flimsy research created like, you know, this massive public opinion that fat yeah. is really bad. It's essential. The wrong types of fats uh, consumed in excess can aggravate inflammatory issues, can be uh, you know, problematic to certain elements of cardiovascular health, mm. but one thing they won't do is make you put on fat. Fat doesn't make people fat, it can't. Only if you have too much. You yeah. Have well, if, and loads, yeah, I mean, if, it, well, yeah. if you have too much, you're probably you're going to give yourself digestive problems first. It's probably yeah. going to come straight out the other end, okay. or you're going you're gonna to cause problems for the cardiovascular system. So. Do actually have fat in your diet. That includes but butter, everyone. Yeah, you can eat butter, and yeah, it's as, better than marge, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, as we, you know, both <laughs> both said, it's just don't have too don't have too yeah, much of it. Yeah. Keep away from like the the weird and wonderful low fat things. These awful like low fat spreads and stuff. Throw them in the bin. They're no good to it anyone. It tastes horrible. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. So you're better off having the full fat stuff than the have the real have thing. The, your yeah. body knows what to do with it. Have right. too much of it. You know, you might you might cause some problems for yourself. But you have it in a sensible amount. Real food. So that's such a big mistake that we all, we've all made at some point because you just assume low fat means it's better for you, but it's, but it's, it's just eating rubbish. And people yeah. are taking in fat, not just what they put on their toast, but fat in processed foods. You know, there's mm. a lot of fat there. So if you eat too much fat it, from, from other sources, that's mm. going to make you put weight on. So it's not right. just the fat that you put on your butter that people mm. should think, think about. Okay. We're going to go to a quick break because time is flying today, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Okay, we do have a few questions from the viewers as well, which, you know, hopefully Excellent. we'll get time to answer everything. But I'd also like to talk about uh, maybe things, foods that we can eat and maybe exercise that can uplift someone's mood as well. Because obviously if, yeah. we, if we do eat the wrong kind of things and we're not exercising, that can make people feel depressed even. They get quite... Yeah. You know, they feel quite low about themselves and they think there's something wrong with them, but it's not. It's just because of what they're eating or because of what they're not doing in regards to Absolutely. exercise. So we're going to be talking about that after this break. So do join us. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so we have a little bit more time left to ask our experts some questions. So I've got a few fitness ones for you, Jane, and okay. some more nutritional ones as well for you, Dale. So uh, this person's asking, what's the best way to speed up your metabolism when you're trying to lose weight? Well, I think the best way to speed up your, your, your metabolic rate is to, is to exercise. Um, you know, so if you do some cardiovascular type of exercise mm -hmm. or some exercise where you are working with resistance, you know, working with weight, um, raising your heart rate, getting your blood flowing around your body, that's going to boost your metabolic rate and burn calories. And of course, as we've talked about before, when you're strong and your muscles are strong, they're more mm. calorie hungry than body fat. So if you can shift your ratio towards muscle, that yeah. really lifts your metabolic rate. Okay. Do you remember we talked about that yeah, last yeah, time? I remember, so yeah. if you um, are, you could be the same size as someone else, but if you've got more muscle, it's a more densely packed tissue than fat and it weighs mm -hmm. more. So you can be the same size and heavier um, okay. if you've got more muscle. So that's the best way. There is no shortcut, I'm afraid. You know, I would love to be able to say, just jump up and down for five minutes a day. That's all you need to do, you know, and you, you'll be slim and you'll burn all the calories you want. You just have to build have in to a in sensible get, regime of yeah. exercise. 
balance any it. any food though that someone can eat that can maybe speed it up a bit you think i think protein is like probably your best friend there i mean for to speed up your metabolism. Yeah, because it, because you actually uh, require more enzymatic processes to break it down. You get something called dietary induced thermogenesis. Okay, where basically you're you're generating heat because you're uh, producing more enzymes, more digestive fluids, oh. more uh, things that are involved in actually physically yeah. breaking that down. Um, it takes longer to digest a protein than it does um, a carbohydrate. So, you know, it will be in your digestive tract for longer. Then you, took, then you add in, you know, like we've, we've yeah. been saying, you add the complex <coughs> carbohydrates in there as well. It yeah. takes even longer still okay. for that meal to break down. Then you've got more biological yeah. stuff going on. And that's why on. protein keeps you fuller for longer. Mm. So if you mm -hmm. make sure you've got protein in your meals, you will feel fuller for longer. And the right kind of carbohydrate, carbohydrates have the same effect because they have a slower release. Than, right. than the white refined toast <laughs> and that kind of thing is it, yeah. it gives you more of a quick boost and then a quicker drop okay. so what about what about green tea would you recommend um, having that before you exercise because I've read that a few times like um, it speeds it up and I, I can't say personally I've, I've ever recommended that I mean mm. I'd, I'm sure it wouldn't do you any harm it's a healthy drink in terms of whether or not you should have it before or after exercise I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference okay. to be honest you should be hydrated yeah, you know, have enough water before and during exercise, or green tea, or whatever it is. Just make sure you're not dehydrated. That's that's what I honestly think. Okay, and we've got one about uh, someone asking about walking because um, she's asking how good is walking. Yeah, <laughs> but I think what she's getting is maybe that's all she has time to do. So is that yeah effective enough as a, as a form of exercise? Just Absolutely walking? fantastic is the answer. Mm. Fantastic. If all you ever do is walk, then you're doing well. I mean, a lot of people never walk. If you think about it, they're quite sedentary. They yeah. drive everywhere. They might get, you know, the bus or um, they don't even walk even down the road. Mm -hmm. Some people walking is brilliant and, I know, and it doesn't burn loads and loads of calories. I mean, power walking does. You know, if you get your trainers on and you go for a I'll brisk my trainers, walk. By the way. Good. Yeah, sorry. I've lost my trainers, you see. Yeah, but I'm okay. really <laughs> glad to hear that, that you've got your trainers on. Use them. <laughs> No, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I'll, I'll text you tomorrow. All right. Um, but yeah, if you if you walk fast, if your if your aim is to improve your fitness and try and lose weight, walk faster and mm. walk for longer. You know, build it into your life. Um, if you are really unfit already and you're just starting, then start by walking ten minutes a day. It's yeah. fantastic. It's really good for you. And it's good. It's not just about the metabolic rate and the calories. It's about how good it is for your heart, getting fresh air, mm -hmm. keeping the muscles in your legs strong. It keeps your core strong. It's an all-over exercise. You know, if you're walking, you're strengthening everywhere except the upper body. You know. Yeah. But yeah, the answer is yes. Unless you're holding your shopping bags and stuff, I suppose. Yeah, and then you have to be careful because you can, you know, <coughs> go off balance and hurt oh, your back yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's not ideal walking unless it's on a rucksack. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not ideal walking with bags. Okay. But you know, walking is brilliant. It's free. You know, it's enjoyable. Borrow somebody's dog and go for a walk. Definitely. Right. <laughs> and how long? How long? I know there's all these different sort of theories about the amount of exercise someone should do. Yeah. A week. What What would you recommend, Jane, for that? Um, there are different guidelines, but the basic government guidelines are that you should try and have medium type of activity for 30 minutes a day as a minimum mm -hmm. and you should do something that raises your heart rate for 20 minutes three times a week that's like right. a if you have that in your mind you're not going to go far wrong that is a minimum I should add mm -hmm. don't think like I've done that I'd never need to do any more <laughs> that's a minimum yeah. so moderate activity would be a walk that would count mm -hmm. as your 30 minutes a day housework if you're hoovering and going up and downstairs mm -hmm. that counts um you know swimming gentle swim that type of thing 30 minutes a day but something harder where you are getting to the point of breathlessness so that would be mm. the trainers on and the power walk or the jog or the zumba class or the yeah. aerobics class or you know something I like that i must do zumba class one day that's something i know I haven't done 20 yet, I'll, minutes I'll, 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 yeah three okay. times a week now we have a question here from a viewer who's asking about sparkling water and i have to say this is the same question that i've had for quite a while and, I, and believe it or not i was doing a lot of research on the internet i couldn't find anything about mm. it so this person's asking, I drink 1.5 litres of sparkling water a day. Is it wrong to be drinking so much sparkling water or should I just drink still water? I personally would go over to the still. Um, the simple reason that sparkling can cause some digestive upsets because it's quite acidic. 
Mm -hmm. If you dissolve carbon dioxide gas into a liquid, it creates carbonic acid, and that can affect um, digestive function. Right. Uh, to a point, it can affect your digestion of certain compounds. It can, it can impair carbohydrate digestion, for example, uh, because of because um, it's changing the pH of that environment only temporarily. Mm -hmm. But it's better to drink still water. In my okay, opinion. You know, that's something but, else I have to give you know up. Then, apart from the white you know, toast, spa sparkling water is a, a, a damn sight better than a pint of beer. Okay, so right. you know it's it's a step in the right direction. So you know, it's certainly not bad. And then. You know, yeah, it's certainly not bad. But if you're if yeah. if you're able to choose between the two, go. Because I was drinking or? like I sometimes drink about four or five glasses of sparkling water a day. That's, that's quite. It's not a lot. the end of the world. It depends. I mean, if if you were drinking other things in between, yeah. that, you know, dilute it, it's probably not so much of a problem. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that down as well. And this person's asking, does it actually balance out if we eat junk, but then something healthy too? It depends on <laughs> what you want to achieve, I guess, and what your priorities are. You know, any, anything that good that you eat will, uh, will, will, will do you good. I mean, ideally, yeah. you want to be moving towards as much <coughs> fresh, proper, real food as you possibly can. I think this person's just trying to, you know. I think they're just I think yeah. trying to justify the having exercise. You know, what? if someone eats something healthy yeah. that doesn't give you a license then to go and overload on unhealthy yeah. stuff, yeah. you know, it's just being sensible and balanced, isn't it, at the end of the day? That's it, have a big salad and then go out and buy a packet yeah. of fags. It's like, well, you know. <laughs> Jane, you were telling us about a lovely lunch that you have. Yes. That's quick, that's very nutritious, that gives you loads yes. of energy. Can and you Dale tell our viewers about that? You, I do, it's yeah. absolutely. Yeah. If I'm in a rush yeah. and I'm busy and I'm hungry, I will just get two pieces of um, nice granary seeded bread, mm -hmm. nice um, healthy carbohydrates, and I get the smoked mackerel that you get vacuum packed. It's really cheap, mm -hmm. you know, the oily fish. Yeah. Peel the skin off. Um, if, I, if I've got an extra 10 seconds, I might squash it with a knife, but if I haven't, I literally just put it on the buttered bread, put another piece on top, stick some rocket in and mayonnaise, cut full it in half. Full fat mayonnaise? Um, sometimes we have full fat, sometimes <laughs> we do get the low fat stuff, I must admit. Oh, okay. Okay, now you're good. I'm going to give you some of my chain. low fat mayonnaise anymore. No, I might switch yeah. to the full fat, but yeah. then I just cut it in half, yeah. and I've got a sandwich. And you know, mm, that, that whole... Really good. And, and actually, if the mackerel fillet is small, I'll put two in. So I have a real decent portion of protein. Yeah. And I feel really nicely full after that. And I feel full for a long time. And I don't have a slump two hours later. Right. And that sees me all the way through the afternoon rushing around doing classes or seeing clients. And you do lots of classes, do. don't you? So yeah. that keeps you energised. Keeps more. my energy going, I promise you. Yeah. It's really good. I it's really easy. I must try that. I must try that. Mm. And I can do that when I go out for my trips and stuff and have that with me. After still. you've done your power walk with your trainers After I've done my power walk with my trainers. <laughs> and my before. boots on. Yeah. Okay, I'm run out of time. Oh. Boo. Well, this has been so interesting. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you so much, Thank Dale. You. Thanks, Thanks for And I'm so looking forward to eating more of the stuff yeah. on the show. That soup so, is delicious. <laughs> it is. It's lovely. I'm going to mm. make, definitely going to make that. So, okay, if you want any more advice, you do. You can do, um, email me. I've lost, I've lost what I'm saying now because I'm just thinking about those. <laughs> what are they called, by the way? Yeah, they're um, banana peanut butter oat bars. Banana peanut butter oat bars. Okay. So, anyway, if you have any more questions for our experts, you can email me and I will forward them to them. So, you can email me on chris at chriscbshow.tv and all their details will be up on the website as well. I do hope you've enjoyed today's show. It's been very, very enlightening, eye-opening and interesting. So we'll see you again next time on the Chrissy B Show. And Monday's show is all about miserable Britain. Why are Brits sometimes ve looking very down, very depressed? I think we're going to touch on nutrition as well. Yeah. That's more oily fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. oily fish. There you go. There you have it from the expert. Okay, so we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now. And you're just about to find out why. And I'm supposed to walk up the stairs, aren't I? Sorry, I forgot. Okay, we are about to go on the river right now. It's absolutely freezing, but I'm having a great time. And Bob, go, Barbara's yeah. not <laughs> doing so well over there. Are you cold, my darling? Oh, the poor thing. She's even got a cameraman's coat on. But we're going to have a really good time on the boat now. Right. <laughs>